So we want to talk about what we call uncertainty expectation forecast for the architecture and new construction, um, which, is a, which, which is a strange name to name it, right? Uh, but I, I'll, I'll clarify that. So today we've got uh, so speaker Pedro, Pedro Manuel Ojo from Fossil Partners, uh, Rasmus Frick Instrum from Tarn and Thompson, and myself. Uh, let's quickly make an introduction of them, and then go for uh, for the for the for the webinar. So, Pedro, if you can can you can you introduce yourself? Make sure everyone knows to you uh, what you do and where you work. Yeah. Um, hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks for participating. Um, and to Modelical to uh, organize this kind of um, this kind of conference, this kind of webinar is always interesting to share share um, our experiences. Um, my name is Pedro, I'm Portuguese. Um, I uh, have a master's degree in architecture and in communication of architecture. Um, in a young private institution in Portugal, in the north of Portugal. Uh, it's very much um, um, an, an institution that is, is very design focused and com using the communication tools. So it, it, it tends to show us the, the real world of architecture. Um, Probably that's why at the moment they have just a few students. Um, but yeah, so that's my um, uh, university background, let's say. Um, around 2008, I joined a small practice in Porto, but very successful, um, where obviously post 2008 crisis um, hit hard. Uh, we were doing loads of competitions, loads of uh, unsolicited projects as well, which is a very interesting thing for the background of, of uncertainty, Alcan architecture, sometimes um, just by itself or by their own will to uh, do designs and share the designs with the people uh, to make them dream. Uh, so we did a lot of those and actually in one of the projects we managed to build it. So the Doro Marina is a, a very interesting building in the, in the, in the river of Porto that um, completely changed the way the people were seeing the river at Doro, which is some a very important element on the setting of Porto. Uh, it moved from being just a you know a scenery or a setting to something that people were using as a, a recreation as well with the boats. Um, but then obviously Portugal is a small country in the south of Europe. Reality struck, and uh, the own aspiration of of wanting to uh, you know to 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 uh, target for some career ascension. I I went to Paris. To work with uh, Dominique Perrault, where you know a, another level of uh, discipline uh, of architecture struck in, and the level of demanding, the level of craftsmanship uh, was was a lot higher. Um, I'm been mostly on one project there, also built uh, the Paris Longchamp uh, race course, which is um, gave me the you know the the an, an, a window to what managing a a big client is France Gallo in France is probably one of the richest companies, also one of the more demanding ones. And to me, was was a real challenge to, on a foreign language that at the time I didn't dominate at all, um, uh, how to you know make be part of an architecture team and and, and and so on. And obviously, as a natural aspiration, you know, Fosters is the next step of that. Um, it's 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 the natural evolution of being abroad. Um, and it has been a wonderful journey so far. Um, I was given, I was lucky to, to be at the right place at the right time and, and, and you know, uh, given the right opportunities um, until now, at, at least. Uh, so I'm very grateful to be able to, to do projects in, in such different places, such different, uh, you know, uh, characters that we deal with, with the consultants, uh, external, internal, and, and that is obviously uh, very exciting for design and, and, and creativity, which in the end is what all architecture is about. Thanks, Pedro. I think uh, that was a good point uh, that, that explained a little bit your career. So that, that settled the base for what we're going to discuss later. Rasmus, you can you know, present yourself, introduce uh, to the public. Uh, maybe we can speed up with the time we, we lost. Yeah, and, and I apologize. Important. I had some technical issues. We are all friends here. Uh, just, just let me put into this. We are, we are friends before we've been working together. So you, everyone needs to know that. Now we, we have a different experience we want to share. So go ahead. But, can you just let me know if the sound is okay? Because I might be a bit behind. I might not get the sound. You're perfect, right Raz, as usual. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, again, Juan and Delica, thank you uh, for the invitation. I think it's, it's nice of you to consider me. 
to do this, uh, and it's it's a good it's a it's a good uh, group of people we have here. Uh, and I can see there's a lot of, of people in the in the attendees here that I know as well, which is nice to see some familiar names. Uh, so my name is Rasmus Freik Engstrom, and I'm a principal consultant at Turnham Township. Uh, my background is architectural technology and construction management for the Copenhagen School of Design uh, and Technology. And I am also currently doing a master's in BIM management at uh, Middlesex University. You know, I've been I've been working on that quite a lot because I still have to do my thesis, and uh, you know, it's it's been it's been underway a few years now. But I hope to finish that uh, this summer here. Um, so I was I was working as a, a construction architect in Copenhagen before I moved to London in 2014 to work for Foster and Partners as a BIM coordinator, uh, where I eventually became a, an associate BIM and design systems lead before moving to Turner and Townsend uh, Technology Division uh, as a principal consultant uh, two years ago. This is also where I know I, from Foster's where I know Pedro and, and JP uh, from. But a bit about uh, Turner and Townsend because you know this is I think. A lot of architects in this, and, and I moved away to some extent from architecture and more into to the client side. Uh, so our um, our core services in in Turn and Townsend is uh, project management and cost management. Uh, we are a global consultancy where we serve clients in real estate, infrastructure, and natural resource sectors. Um, but we also have a technology group where we work with clients on general digital transformation, uh, BIM process implementation, quality assurance, data and analytics, asset security, uh, IoT. So generally helping clients uh, become a digital and deliver digital, whether it's a project or it's on an organizational, organizational level. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it for me. Thanks, Rasmus. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be quick. Uh, uh, I I just post the uh, Tan and Tan's uh, website there. I think it's very interesting. Uh, get to know the company, uh, the work they do, uh, and the, and the, and, the, and the, the way they they they, they are moving to digital uh, on all levels. It's a, it's, a, it's a big company, and they do many things. So my name is Juan Perez. I work for Modelica Associate Practices in London. Um, uh, you know you are here with us. We are uh, we are a, a, a technological based uh, company uh, for construction, looking always for solution. And, and 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 the time that I should have for this, I'm going to skip it to, to start a webinar because I think we need to move on and get a bit of, of, of rhythm. So we're going to talk now about uh, managing uncertainties, which is it's not it's not a word that we hear every day, but I think it's interesting uh, 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 and that that. That got your attention, right? That's why you are here at this webinar. We don't have a large audience today, but at least we, la we have, we, we like it all. So we really like you are here. So let's try to get the best of this small room where we can maybe just put some questions or, or, or thoughts here. Um, why uncertainties? I, I think it has been a year, and um, uncertainty we mean when something is not clear, when it's slightly dull, obviously this varies from total, uh, total, uh, 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 security into something to 99 percent but uh, in the last year and we don't want to say COVID anymore it's just last year and that happens uh, many things change many many problems many many things that we our, our ground has been shaking our basis has has now uh, moved and, 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 and we, we thought it was going to be a good idea to, to discuss about that and the first question I'm going to put now into 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 the speakers is like uh, is, is this is like the first one for you, Rasmus. Which one has been your uncertainties, and uh, uh, how does it affect you during, during this last? So it's obviously okay. difficult to talk about uncertainty without talking about COVID, uh, because it, it was a weird time last year. I think I, I you know, I think it's the first time, unless you're 100 years old, you've never been uh, through a pandemic before uh, on this scale, at least. And I was furloughed from April to can you remember four months? I was I was furloughed. Uh, so there was obviously a, a lot of uncertainty because at the time I thought it was going to last three weeks uh, and it ended up lasting four months. There's all this uncertainty about whether you will ever go back to work, um, whether work will be the same when you get back. And I think I learned a lot about myself as well in terms of uh, what it means to do nothing. I think I spoke to some people who, who 
I think who who worked harder through the pandemic because they probably have to cover for for people who were furloughed, um, and would probably rather have been furloughed than working through it. But it sounds like a vacation, but I I thought it was really difficult sitting at home, uh, you know, having to find ways to motivate yourself, upskill yourself, stay motivated. Because I think I'm somebody who needs to be presented with problems uh, from other people and try to solve them. That keeps me motivated. When all of a sudden you're just on your own and you have to, you know, find ways to entertain yourself, it, it gets it gets to a point where you watch enough YouTube videos, uh, and then it just becomes a dreadful experience. Uh, but I obviously came back to work after after four months, um, and and the, and the main focus there from from a from a uncertainty point of view. Um, which I obviously wasn't part of in the beginning because I was furloughed. So it was all my colleagues going to do this uh, on an organizational scale as how to transition uh, to working from home, um, where everybody was used to going to an office, uh, going to client's office, uh, and be much closer to the client uh, than normally. So the, the uncertainty and, and the challenge there, I think, was to, to try to support our clients the best way possible in a new kind of landscape that we haven't tried before but also getting the infrastructure in place to do so and understand how we could help clients get the infrastructure uh, in, in place to do so. Did you manage to continue with the, with the projects working from home the same way, working in the office, where the client expected to yeah, it's, it's start kind of in the path? You know, I didn't feel any disruption. So I worked from home two weeks before I got furloughed. So I, if I recall correctly, it was in a... It was on a Thursday night, everybody was told to work from home, right? So the Friday, work from home, and then started probably on Monday. And I think, um, I think it was quite smooth. I didn't, I didn't have any issues, which was quite impressive how, how quickly we could transition. Uh, but also how we could understand how, you know, if a, if a client, they, a lot of the projects were still going on, obviously. Uh, so it's about how we could, could help not just the client, but also their uh, supply chain with, perhaps moving uh, projects to BIM 360 and, and move everything to the cloud so we can still work from home. I think the biggest issue... I use, use the technology to, to improve the, the, the exactly. new chain. And it's I think the biggest answer. issue, which no, is probably an issue everybody's had, was your own personal internet. That became almost like a bottleneck uh, <laughs> in working from home, which which I think uh, Very true. just shows how, how reliant we are on good infrastructure now. And, you know, it's they're not always... Uh, you're not always in a place where you can get the best internet, which at the time I lived in Angel, and my internet was extremely slow. So, you know, me and my brother both had to work from home, and it was just, uh, it was just a bit tricky sometimes. But I think that was the, kind of the biggest issue. So it was, it was quite a smooth transition, even though it was a lot of uncertainty. I think that's uh, that's a great point, uh, Pedro. How, how was this experience for you? So, how was uh, what was your answer to when everything changed, uh, disruption last year, and uh, how this yeah, how does um, affect you? I think uncertainty in the end is, is something that is very synonym. Uh, it's a synonym in, in the in the in the industry, isn't it? Because uh, mostly for the design part of the of the industry, which is architecture, we always live with uncertainty. The problem is that, as as Raz was mentioned. This uncertainty was quite specific this year, which was due to, you know, to a, a disease that we cannot control. It was not a crisis driven by, by a lack of money uh, in the society or lack of investment. It was a crisis that was, you know, a pandemic and a social crisis. So therefore, that changed a little bit completely the, uh, the, um, the, the type of response as well. Um, uh, from my experience, you know, uh, obviously everyone was quite nervous. How could we? And obviously we have, were dealing with big projects in different places that have, you know, different cultures uh, that have also had different ways to deal with, uh, with the pandemic as well. So the projects I've been involved with since the COVID was from Oxford to China and also mainly in the MENA region as well, which uh, <laughs> uncertainty in that area is managed in a very, in a very specific way as well. Um, so to us, at least talking about my experience, the challenge was really about, you know, how to manage the project at distance, right? And managing the project at distance uh, uh, brought some challenges and also, you know, also some opportunities because uh, in a big uh, structure like ours, um, obviously there is a sort of uh, a sort of hierarchy that suddenly um, became a bit more horizontal because everyone could be could be involved. Everyone could be in the same room 
um, you know, it's a virtual room, but it's still a bit, um, you know, a space where everyone, at least I tried, and uh, we, we made an effort to try that everyone had a voice, which probably before didn't happen. So in that sense, I think, you know, it, it was difficult to manage. We, we as, as Rasmo said, uh, the, sometimes we had some problems and mostly were coming from the actual the connection for people. But obviously, as, as, as managers, we, we wanted to, to be able to, you know, see what people are doing, but also uh, to be able to deliver on time the project. So you, there was a huge effort of, you know, in terms of communication to, to, to deliver things. So communication externally and the communication internally. Um, it was demanding, but it was possible. So we delivered. So uh, we've been uh, working. It, it was very successful was because look, successful, uh, one of the projects right? I worked on uh, was from pre-concept to detailed design. So we're talking about all the phases of projects, with, which demand mm -hmm. different types of reviews, different types of, you know, of of of, of skills, and and we delivered. Uh, obviously, with a huge effort from everyone in the team, but it was possible. So it is possible to deliver. We need to learn from this, and 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 the next steps need to obviously have this in consideration. Okay, okay. Well, um, for for me, the experience was a bit different. Uh, I I I just uh, uh, changed my career last year. Uh, I, I I get married. Uh, uh, many many things. So everything was pretty much uh, an incognito for me. I didn't know what's going to happen. So what's one more thing? Uh, besides the, the, the health issues, so um, uh, the, well, what, can, what, can, what I want to uh, uh, express is that in terms of in changes, it was nothing that it, it normal changes. And, and what we discovered in Modelica, there was no transition for us. We were just working from home before, and we get uh, position ourselves as an expert. So that came as far as our uh, uh, scope of work, let's say. So clients were asking us how to do that. How do you manage to put a thousand people working from home? What do you need? Which one is the system? Now all these applications came that you help us. The application help us, but it's the company. The way you use the tool is important. So important things that I now want to mention after that is that how how the how the construction uh, is sh is shaking, right? So this source from McKinsey is saying that. Uh, th there's going to be a risk distribution of the of the of the budget of the of, of the pl players are going to receive more or less a uh, budget for the uh, part of the contract industry. So this is changing, and that's our opportunity. This is not this this is good for us in a, in a way. And a year ago, a year ago, there was a there was this nice uh, uh, quote that I think I will ask you: Are you agree? It was the new the new, the next normal in construction. Uh, the, the disruption is reshaping the world largest ecosystem, and the crisis will accelerate the change that has already started uh, to occur at scale. It, it was for you. You think this 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 changed you and, and, and accelerate the the, the the system? Well, I think we have different opinions, but perhaps which one is yours? One of the things is interesting is the growth of all the companies uh, has been just exponentially having. It's not. It's not L negative, right? It's not poor law. It's not. Uh, it's not uh, uh, administration. There are companies that have been booming and rising profits and budget and, and hiring, and they cannot cope with that. So there are some companies that are just going beyond the expected. So there has been an opportunity for them. So yeah, there's always there's always this in, in, in this in this uh, in sense that this uncertainty is 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 obviously as bad as for someone is very good. Order. So we need to be able to maybe in the future be very reactive to position ourselves and knowing that there's always opportunity even in the worst case scenario. And moving forward, uh, we're going to uh, mention what has been the trends in the in the in the 2020 and the future. So, Rasmus, which one has been like the future trends for you? Uh, I mean, the, the current trends for you. Uh, Obviously, the change in how we work is a, is a, been a big thing, but I think we have to just put technology on the side. Uh, for a second, I think there's much more importance, at least in, in turn and Townsend, that how interaction with people has become uh, much more of a focus. Um, and the same with mental health uh, and a healthy working environment, which I think is a really good thing. It's not like mental health was an, an issue before, but I think it's uh, it's accelerated during during the lockdown and working from home because people have been been lonely, maybe I've been not, not having seen a lot of people. 
so I think it's it's a good thing that is becoming so much focus on it because I think everybody is, you know, struggling with their own things, and the fact that you can talk uh, talk about it now without it being taboo, I think is a, is a really really good thing, and it's something that employers are starting to to focus much more on. Um, because I think, as we all know, heavy employees equals better employees, right? And better employees are more productive. So I think it, there's this understanding that it's not just work, work, work. It's always also about how you feel about uh, feel about going to work. And if if you are happy to go to work, it, it's a much better environment to be in. Um, and and then there's obviously the sustainability push. And I think as as we talked about uh, one of the other days, we don't know whether it's due to COVID or whether it's a natural development, but I feel like there's been a big push towards um, uh, sustainability and, and committing to certain goals. So in turn and towns, we've committed to net zero by 2030 uh, with, a, with a new campaign we have called New Leaf. So I think that's a really positive thing because it, it's it's something we all know is an issue. It's just how do you tackle it? And, and on a personal level, I think it's one of those things that can be difficult because me, uh, biking to work doesn't feel like it has a big impact, but when companies, big corporations start to push it, they have a much bigger reach, much, big, much bigger impact. Uh, so it's good to see that, that that's becoming in focus now. Uh, I think besides that, IT has become a much more uh, integral part of, of the way we work. I think it always to some extent was, but now uh, I think we will start working much closer with our IT department because as everything is moving to uh, to the cloud, there will be much more reliance on having really good infrastructure in place and a really good uh, good IT department because we're getting to a point, you know, where, where if you don't have internet, you can't you can't get access to anything, and I think that is it's a, a huge opportunity in terms of, of being flexible, but it's also a huge risk. Uh, and there's a lot of exposure, I think, cyber, cyber attacks and, uh, and those kind of things. And then I think, obviously, this, this thing about being connected, uh, I think, is also understanding how, that, how that's going to work going forward in terms of working from home, working from an office. I mean, there's other people that, like, there's Spanish people in this call. I don't know how it is in, in Spain right now with working. I know in Denmark, people go to work now. We still, in, in the UK, have to work from home. So even though we talk about COVID as a thing in the past. I think it's still very much a thing here in the UK. Uh, so I, I think it still has some kind of uh, influence on how, on how we, we go about our everyday. But I think it's also pushed, sorry, John. I, I, I was going to put the question. I mean, uh, into the into the audience. So for this, as you say, Spanish or or everyone uh, as uh, UK or Denmark, as you clarify, how is your situation working for home? How is your country? So please feel free to 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 join us. I mean, that's 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 one of the things we are doing in this call is is, is this format of of being participative is something that you want to do. I mean, feeling feeling comfortable from your house, from like I am in my house. This is my my my, my house. So. Uh, the question is how how you feel how you uh, with situation what from what Rasmus was saying and, and and you can finish now Rasmus sorry, yes, before jumping to Pedro. Ah, sorry, I thought you were you were putting the question to the to the people. Yeah, please. No, I think the last thing is this this whole thing about uh, working from in the beginning. I think that at least for us there was a big uh, urge to understand how it would affect our productivity, uh, but it. It seems to to not really have affected it that much, um, and I think it's to some extent push companies to understand how they can be more effective. Uh, and I think, given that we're now so reliant on technology, it's also seeing how we can use technology to be more efficient. Uh, I've seen an increased interest in understanding uh, data, right? Like companies' internal data through dashboards, analytics. Uh, to understand if there's certain patterns you haven't seen uh, by having data in silos. So I think that's also going to be be something we will see in the future. Also tying into information and models as well. Okay. 
Okay, thanks, Rasmus. So John answered, uh, for the Netherlands, it's a 30% of the time working from the office and then the rest is working from home. I think this is open and very interesting debate. Uh, debate actually can go to another talk, which is how it's going to be the future of work. So we're going to go back to the office 100%, we're going to back to the uh, working from home. It's going to be a mix. But everything is going to change. So a company from uh, a thousand people doesn't need a thousand seats anymore. Okay. What will happen? Uh, what do you think will happen if you wanted to ask your question? So I'm gonna make the, I'm gonna do this question before uh, Pedro for you. Uh, wh which one do you think were the trends for you, your company, your sector during this 2021? And now Pedro, for you, yeah, you sure. I think um, it's it's very interesting what Rasmus is saying about you know the flexibility and so on. But uh, there's also other side of the coin, right? And uh, the moment that we are so connected online and we're um, we're disconnected physically and uh, the disconnection physically uh, to an office to your colleagues in the office to a certain atmosphere that a company tries hard to create around their employees also makes the sense of belonging to a company a lot more difficult to achieve right so uh, on the side of the employee is a lot more difficult to retain people and that is something that we should be aware of as a as a tendency for for the future uh, and on the other side, uh, managing people became a lot more difficult as well because it was not just about managing the project. It was also about, again, managing people because of the problems that Erasmus was, was talking about, about mental health and so on. So we had to pay a lot more um, attention to, you know, motivation uh, of, uh, of, of people so we can increase that sense of, of, of belonging and that, that sort of, you know, um, compromise with, with what's happening. So I think, um, you know, uh, the tendency, uh, hopefully, uh, I think, will be to uh, provide a certain degree of flexibility to everyone, um, but at the same time protecting what are the core values of a company. And I think in architecture in specific, it's very important that sense of belonging, that, that, that connection, that physical connection to an institution. And I think uh, going back to the office is, 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 is important because in the end we can talk about, you know, uh, working from home forever. Yes, that's, that's, that's okay. Um, we can talk about working from another countries, uh, as well. That's very challenging in terms of rules. Maybe, maybe there's a discussion that we could have about what does it mean, you know, paying taxes here or there? Uh, can I pay taxes in different countries? Uh, I mean, the rules are here to be changed. Maybe that's, that's a direction that society wants to go ahead. But, you know, this, there's a sociological side of work that in a campus as big as Foster's is very important. And somehow that was lost. And again, that, that, is, that can't be forgotten and, and it's very important to, to be kept somehow. Uh, because we're talking about the identity of a brand and the identity of a company. And uh, in the end, that, that's, that's also to be, to, be, to be protected and also that we, we should feel we belong to. So responding to your question, Juan, I think, I think uh, each case needs to be dealt um, in a very specific way, depending on uh, how big the company is and how, how the company wants to work in the future. I don't think it should be something that, that could be, I don't think a rule could be applied to everyone because otherwise you would not be, you would not again be respecting uh, the specificity of each one. I think it's also about not not making one solution for all your employees. Thanks, yeah, exactly. I think it's about flexibility. Not... Flexibility in everything, you know? It's not just about, okay, from now we, on we, have... we can work whenever we want, wherever we want. It's not like that. It's, it's, it's flexibility uh, according to the rules uh, of each company, what suits best, what makes sense. Because again, it is true that, you know, managing became something a lot more than just managing a content of a, of a, of a project. Okay, I think we need to get moving on. There is a very good point from Jose. I would say is that if we think uh, that the employee is working, requesting the employees going back to the office will 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 uh, lose some talent. But that's absolutely uh, correct. And I believe from last week, uh, Arrow has actually opened the possibilities for you work, everyone, where you want any any place in the world, with some conditions to be able to attend meetings and be. One, in one day, from one day to another, or something like that, available. Uh, do you think that could take some talent from companies just because of the conditions or the way that we have living? 
I think that that could that could uh, happen. Uh, for me, for me, uh, the trend for the last year and what I want to highlight here is, is, is the massive fall of the growth or of the construction industry. So this chart from the RICS says that we actually uh, increased 15, 14 points. Um, despite of, 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 of difficulties with the supply chain, there's a bottleneck of the supply chain. There's no same conditions that, that two years ago uh, to provide the construction uh, as usual uh, with the, with the, uh, with the uh, machinery, uh, materials, uh, resource. And there's a comparative for America, Asia, Pacific, Europe, and Middle East, different construction sectors. Uh, and, and, and the limitations they've got. Uh, uh, we can see like financial is, is a big one and also cost of material. That's, that's what has been, for me, a point that we need to remember for this year. Um, then what, what do we think now, uh, Rasmus, what do we think is going to be the trend for them? And this is when it gets tricky, right? Now it's very difficult to do prediction and forecast. That's the second part of the, of the, of the, of the, of the talk. Uh, which one do you think is going to be the forecast, uh, which is what we will all would like to know, right? To, to do our best to position ourselves in the market to be the best or our, as better one to retain the talent with the, with the right condition. Or as Jose was mentioned in the chat, uh, which one will be the, do Checking you think will be the trend for I the next it's, it's uh, rest of the year? Classes you have on. Because obviously, but my, I think the trends I see would be perhaps completely different from the ones Pedro is doing. From from a from working in a in a architectural practice, but I I will see the building operations facility management getting much more involved in the digital transformation, um, especially as this ties into the whole sustainability question for a big organization. You know, operating buildings it's a big, not only a big cost but also a big contributor to uh, to the carbon footprint. So understanding how to operate those more efficiently, I think, will become a huge, uh, a huge important uh, aspect for, for a lot of companies. And I think also in the in the design process, design and construction process, getting that aspect along very early to be able to streamline the, the data that goes from design to construction to operations. But just generally, just understanding how to operate buildings smarter, save energy, save money, and, and to some extent where it's possible to save the environment. Um, and I think it ties into this whole conversation about digital twin. You know, it's a term that I'm not the biggest fan of because it's it's very loose. I think everybody has a different definition of, of what it actually is. But the fact that we're talking about it, I think is a good thing because it's on on, uh, on people's radar now. Can you hear me? Or are you just looking at? Uh... Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Very well. I'm following the I'm following the, the question, the chat. I think I would like to I everyone be participative. So uh, I was responding uh, to Alberto. Another thing we see is also, you know, how organizations uh, manage their data, and I think that's what I talked about before: managing big amounts of data between different divisions in the company, understanding how to make that talk together. And it, it's a, it's an area that you know I'm not I'm not that much involved with, with. And but I, a colleague always says to me, you don't know what you don't know. And I always thought that these kind of things were just, you know, smooth and, and sharing data within a company uh, between different divisions, whether it's, it's uh, you know, uh, salary information or, or just general reporting. I thought it was smooth, but, but I don't think it is often. And I think this is something that will be a big, uh, a big focus on as well. It's, it's, a, it's an order to make better informed decisions, basically once you understand the full picture. Juan, we can't hear you. What will, what will be for you, Pedro, the next, uh, the, the trend for the next end of the year? Okay. And, and I was saying that we need to... No, I would to just like to go. pick uh, where I left, which is, uh, you know, the, what what someone mentioned about retaining the talent with the right conditions, right? So um, I think obviously we, 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 we know that IT had a huge impact and what Rasmus was saying is absolutely critical. How can we be more efficient exchanging information, uh, you know, um, 
I think Revit in that is, is fantastic and, and all these, these tools that we have to communicate uh, design. But on the more, just to keep on the side of sociological thing uh, about managing people in architecture companies, I think, you know, it's, it's very easy nowadays, you know, because the, again, the uncertainty at the moment is a completely different uncertainty that we lived in 2008, 2010, because it's a, a, an uncertainty that comes from the, so, from the sociological side and not from the economical side. Uh, and therefore, the kind of um, the reaction uh, needs to be different as well, right? Um, and I think, you know, uh, keeping the theme of the communication, I think, we and trying to trying to make you know in the society information that we live uh, trying to make uh, people uh, uh, increase that sense of belonging to a company. I think it's 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 very important, right? So why not we tr to try to to engage employees as active members of PR of each company? You know why why do we need to uh, be under the the scope of 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 uh, of uh, a brand uh, and not be able to use it um, in favor of the, the brand itself, right? Um, that, that could be an interesting way to make people, you know, dress the shirt and feel more um, uh, compromised with, with what's happening and, 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 and not leave uh, the companies as, as they are leaving at the moment, you know? Because at the moment, ar architects were always very autistic in the way they communicate. We always communicate to architects. We always uh, design for architects as architects. So, you know, there's also a problem in the discipline that we are a bit disconnected with the outside, with the normal people, right? So I think uh, we could we could kill. Um, I say that uh, one bunny. Uh, yeah. Architects are yeah, the normal people. <laughs> Probably, and I I just think that you know we need to rethink things. You know, it's a great opportunity to rethink things, and maybe you know the use of social media is an important mean to um, to get to more people. Uh, and and to sell architecture better to the common people, let's say, to 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 the people that don't really understand the benefits of it, and I think that could be a real tendency, you know, that just just to um, just to you know engage, you know, we need to engage people into the projects, uh, we need to engage people into the benefits of architecture, and companies could use their own assets to 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 bring that into into play. I think it's it's very interesting to. To, to sell architecture, you know, as a benefit for the society. And we're on the right spot because this crisis increased as well. Um, uh, you know, how can we use communication to it? Obvi obviously, yeah, obviously. And to retain the talent to it somehow as well. No, there, there is no, there is no yeah. more compensation or benefits. There are more things and now people care about working from home. Yeah, also, flexibility, also uh, yeah, yeah, communication. Also, so yeah, that in the end, you, change you, you, you love the rules, you do, right? Uh, so the, you the, want to be able to talk about it uh, openly and freely. So I think that there, you know, there's and and that makes you feel more happy with what you're doing as well. Because suddenly it gets important to someone else rather than your boss or uh, your client, right? So I think, I think that's, that's very important to, uh, you know, reflect about as well how companies can, can, you know, use their assets in a different way, not just to produce stuff. Okay. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention as well of the, of the, of the trends for now, for me, it's how, it's how, how impressive has been the, the market and the growth of the cloud-based uh, uh, applications and solutions. A year ago, two years ago, we were discussing about the security, if it's possible, if not possible. We've been trying to implement in many projects, not only technological, but also just for communication. And it was limited either by government restriction, by company policies, by uh, standard and, and now no one asked that this is a necessity right so cloud based uh, information is needs to be there and, and, and for me the next uh, month so we need to think it's uh, always evaluate the situation so whatever happens whatever it's uncertainty or whatever crisis or even boost of the market now is growing a lot but we need always to think about things so so what okay so what's what's going to happen how we react and, and, and try to always think about where we are um, and also what's going to be uh, it's difficult is uh, planning our business uh, to the future in terms of projects or clients so 
um, now more and more our our uh, models for prediction for uh, uh, the business itself, the revenue has been uh, changing so much. They have been not accurate with the current situation. But even if it is positive, that should be aligned, right? You need to. Sh we should be able to know what's going to happen somehow, but not with this massive change. And one of the options and opportunities we can see is a digitalization of the sector. So this is a, a nine-year-old uh, diagram. Uh, that shows the level of uh, digitalization for different markets, um, different uh, parts of the market. So, digitalization of work, capital uh, depending, marketing, marketing, business procedures, construction. It's it's not at the bottom. This is is the second. Do you think this is any better now? Because we've seen like how much agriculture has moved up and. How, how, for instance, in the Netherlands or, or even in Spain, which is not a techy uh, country, I can see how the, the agriculture has moved on into uh, an incredible level of um, technology applied for for the for the same thing has been doing for years. But that that doesn't, uh, in my opinion, we don't have a, a much better diagram that that we have in the screen now in construction world. Yes, the process has been moving. So pre-construction has been moving on. Pedro has been seeing that doing, and now Foster Partners is, is well adopting technology. I think it, it could could be positioned itself like a trend. Uh, we we do modelically provide the service and, and look for where the, the things that are not written. So open the, our own path in in, in technology uh, application and target us as well. And also in asset management, uh, there's a there's a new level of maintaining and and, and update and control the construction itself doesn't seem to have changed much what do you think that's a question i do to the audience um and now we move into the challenges right so what which one are the challenges now no which one are uh our problems our uh impediments for us to even move forward or complete the projects on time on budget okay. Like tying into what you just said, this uh, technology, I call it technology gap. You have a generational technology gap. I think we spoke about this yesterday, how if you're a software developer, right, you know how to develop software, you might be a good or a bad one. But in this industry, we can have people who are really good architects who might not know how to work with a certain software that has to be used in a project, which is an issue in, in, in skills regarding the technology, which I think is also this transition into how, again, a big part of technology becomes of what it means to be, let's say, an architect or an engineer, that it's it's more about, you know, having an idea. It's about to be able to use the software to deliver a building in a very specific way a client has specified it. Uh, you can also have an architect doing an, an amazing model, of, as an engineer doing an amazing model, handed over to a contractor who ends up just saying they want 2D drawings. So I think this, this gap uh, needs to be needs to be bridged somehow, and I think that, that ties into continuous uh, training. And I think companies putting money into training and research and development within their own company. Historically, the construction industry has, I think, again been on very low uh, in that list of how much have been invested back into research development. I think the trend is starting to change now. Uh, but I think this this focus on training and what what to train people for because I think there's this this landscape now where there's coming new uh, new things in like blockchain and new technologies. So trying to figure out what what your your staff needs to learn in order to stay relevant, I think will be will be quite a big challenge because what works today might be uh, you know might be old school tomorrow. Obviously, it, it doesn't go that fast, but I think if you, for example, want to learn coding, it's not something you learn overnight if you have to start from scratch. Uh, and once you get to the point where you actually understand it, something uh, something else might come in and take over. So I think it's trying to find that, uh, trying to find that balance. Um, and I think we also have to kind of realize that technology does not solve all problems. I think I'm easy to fall into that group to say we want to use tech, latest tech for everything. Uh, 
but I think it's understanding how we use technology for the best purposes and where we resort to it and where we don't. I think that's going to be that's going to be a big challenge. Um, But still, we have to use the technology. It's, it's 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 depending on someone's use, right? It's not it's not the same output for me using a tool than for you, right? I'm not I'm not I'm never gonna ever paint a, a, a something that's gonna be a museum in the future. I need the same technology, the same tool that I don't know a, a famous painter will use. I don't have the skill, so. Do you think it's um, about the technology well, or, or yeah, the yeah. application? Yeah, I do. I do technology. believe it's it's a mix of things. So it's a, it's. I think uh, that I, I totally agree with what Rasmus said uh, on the technical side of things. I think the the right word is balance of type of resources that we have with different skills and mixing people with different skills is absolutely important. Also, also uh, placing the right people uh, to deal with the right people as well. So uh, you know the type of communication they have in between them. Um, uh, the type of skills they have in a certain software or in a certain way. And, and there is a gap, as Ravos was mentioning, between some of the disciplines. For instance, we are delivering um, BIM models even in concept design nowadays. We use a BIM as a, as a technology to, to model because we know the benefits of it. But it's true that some, some consultants are still a bit behind. And, um, actually, Rasmus, some cost consultants are still a bit behind because we, we deliver a BIM model and um, and in the end, uh, they measure things the old way from a 2D flattened DWG. So I think that, that there's things to pick up. I think we're right on the spot of a transition area. I mean, I started here uh, where we are using a software, um, and and we we suddenly changed to another one that is completely different. Obviously, that is very demanding to adapt. Um, but now um, it's about getting the right skills and putting them in the right place and you doing the right thing. I think that that requires more than the actual skill of, of doing things, um, you know, because in the end, the business is, is a lot broader than what you deliver. Um, and there's other parts of, of, the, of the business that are very important, such as the design. And in the end, architecture is all about that. It's design, design, design. And... Um, and yeah, so I totally agree with Rasmus, but uh, there is a there is a tendency now to be very aware of the resources you need and balance the type of resources and skills within the teams. So it's not just the team, all the team needs to know a lot of Revit. No, maybe you have different levels of Revit users in there, but you have a, a wonderful designer and a wonderful thinker and a wonderful painter and a wonderful, uh, you know, um, thinker. So I think this this is... This is what makes the teams interesting and what benefits in the end the, the design and the quality of the project. Okay, um, uh, before before I answer my challenge, I, I better to uh, actually bring a good question. Uh, I'm just gonna respond myself maybe with my uh, opinion, which is uh, who should bring the knowledge or the new knowledge? Well, I think in this case, uh, New knowledge or coming like specific for a, a, a the company you are working right. So if you work for now uh, as a digital consultant, they will it will be new knowledge applied for that role that you need to like. You will develop either coding skills or other type of skill. Now everything's way much diversified. So architects works as a as a consultant, cost consultant, product designer. So that's changing. So I guess the company changing as well. But the, but the true knowledge, the one that you really don't know, no, is, is not that the one that you don't know. You don't know. It's the one that you don't know at all. That then brings something positive in your company. Came from the news, new starts, new people. In my opinion. That's is when the true uh, the seed of the of, the, of something that new uh, can happen. And uh, for us. For, uh, service company we can we can we can implement that and actually try to be an expert for our uh, uh, work with clients which could be pleasure I think everybody and probably have, have a responsibility uh, to bring provide the, the use it's of this right? but I think um, I would encourage everybody who works in a company no matter what the position is if they have a good idea it should be the best idea uh, winning and anyone could be totally. innovative. I think especially totally with, with Interaction between people. I th when I worked at, at Fastest Five, you know, best working days were when I was sat next to people that I worked really well with because we could come up with ideas. And I always say that 
it's a bit stupid thing, but one plus one is three. I think when you're two people, you, you come up with much better ideas than you, uh, than you do alone. And one thing is sitting like we do now on a screen. I think sitting next to somebody in a room, you foster uh, idea creation and innovation much better. So I think that's going to be an important part as well coming back into the office. Yeah, Rasmus, that touches the point that I was saying, right? It's the other side of the coin of not being con uh, connected physically, right? So that that's still very important. And uh, obviously, companies like ours, it's, that's, that's key. It's part of the experience. So in that sense, I think, um, yeah, we need to think uh, the benefit. Yes, flexibility, but... Uh, at, at the right measure, I would say. Okay. Uh, well, that that last point before before we we can run, we have we have some time. Or we have allocated some time for question and answer. There are a few people participate and encourage for the rest of you. We have a small audience. We can do it like more uh, like a family uh, talk. So. Uh, just uh, after this point, we can go into that. The, my, my, the challenge I, I present for, uh, I have present now, I think it's be updated with digital tools. Now there are many things happening at the same time, many options, many different paths for either use uh, artificial, artificial intelligence for uh, working construction, new robots, new technology, etc. And uh, obviously, uh, which one was going to be the most interesting? Which one is going to go further? You're going to get support. It's going to be established, and, and everyone is going to adapt it. As, as Pedro said, uh, BIM is well established everywhere, but as soon as one part of the chain, the weakest, the weakest part of the chain doesn't adopt it, that, that, that uh, jeopardizes the entire process, right? Um, for uh, I think that's important. The second is uh, to be uh, uh, updated in terms of uh, the way that we we build, so uh, move into uh, design for manufacturing and assembly, offsite manufacturing, all fine man, offsite man, uh, uh, is now part. I've seen that part of many projects, many contracts. It's a package now. Maybe in the future it's going to be like that. Uh, why the construction industry is constantly trying to move into this sector uh, and never happens. So we always remain the will. Is it because we cannot control it? Uh, it, it it's happening, but it's slowly, and it will take more time. And then uh, mention this uh, an acceleration. I think something uh, we, we can we can say of now that the construction is changing. But somehow, either at the beginning, at the end, now the construction is slowly changing. Uh, what will happen? I don't know. But but this this is the uncertainty that of uh, thinking we want to put there, which is. Uh, let's move into uh, get the opportunity to position ourselves into a, a, a place that we can use this uh, moment to 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 learn what to do with this new acceleration. However, we need to also uh, remember uh, recently uh, we've seen like uh, one of one of the top uh, tech company uh, construction based. Uh, technology best startup with 7,500 employees is, is going to administration, and they they have raised a 1.2 billion capital, and that was that was that was like the reference for everyone. Okay, so how do we have to do it now? Which one is, which one is going to help to move on this? Um, that's that's it. Uh, that that that's what we want to present. Uh, I hope I hope you like it. I hope you uh, you got your attention. All all that you stay there. We have a question for from from Adrian Adriana Vallejo. Uh, I'm just going to read the question. Either Rasmus, Pedro, do you think no, you want fine. to respond? It. Who do you think should bring? That's that's the one that we actually say. The new knowledge. Yeah, it's a mix, also, right? It's a mix. Uh, yeah, I would, uh, I would uh, like to add to that people, one to uh, touch uh, as well on the, on what you said uh, before uh, about the, the acceleration of the construction, right? Because uh, one of the tendencies we're having, um, and, and to respond to Adriana as well, uh, one of the best ah. experiences I've ever had here is when contractors are involved, right? And um, because we're trying to, I think one of the tendencies is to make the projects faster, unfortunately, uh, which puts a lot of pressure on the design in early stages, but then also makes everyone fight for, a, for an idea or an vision a lot earlier. And that is something very specific to the many region projects. Uh, but um, 
in, in, in order to respond to your question, I think uh, involving contractors in early stages of design is very, very beneficial. Uh, BIM is, um, is a, a, the right tool to it because they can simply extract information from the BIM model and propose them. Uh, uh, again, communication is key here and, and, and COVID brought that into a completely different level. But, um, you know, communicating with the contractors in early stages is, is very, very important because it just cuts the process into half. And um, there is one or two projects that uh, I've been involved with that this thing is happening, and I think that's very, very beneficial. And it, again, it's not about the, the, the personal skills. It's about different skills at different disciplines are brought together into one place. I think that's, that's, that's probably the answer. I think it just, sorry, could I just put something to that point? Because it, interestingly, you know, we've seen- So maybe the question for you, Pedro, is- By either engineering companies, so of big contractors to try to kind of deliver. Or the other way around, Raz, right? Or the other way around, um, yeah, you know, it's a big, a, just bought a big stake in yeah. a Danish uh, contractor company yeah. to try to, to bridge the gap between, you know, designing yes. something for the same manufacturing and bringing a contract in and yes. really working together yes. rather than. And again, OSM, yeah, again, OSM and so on. So all of these things, they need to merge, they need to come from the same source. And there, there is a gap, again, like I said before, the autistic part of architecture. We work, we've been working for years and years independent from the reality, and I think we need to push the reality back to the projects. And I think um, involving contractors at early stages is very, very important because, you know, in the end, I think we're all happy if we build something. It's not just paper architecture. So my question, my Pedro, is uh, the, the, the involve, how do we involve someone here? Because some people adopt technologies, some people, uh, some company needs to move to be competitive. They need to be, you know, that's the differentiator factor for them to get the job or, or position themselves as a, as a reference. Do we have to all try to be better or it needs to be, uh, it needs to be a contract requirement for this? where? That happens with BIMS, 2016 uh, started uh, public projects. So those really boost, what really boosts, like at least in the UK, and now UK is helping the US to, to adopt like BIMS standard. That's, a, that's since a last month. I think uh, one critical, think one critical uh, factor here is clients, right? Uh, so I think clients need to be open to, to, to this kind of new type of contracts and new type of, uh, of of, of uh, dynamic in the industry. Um, if we can convince clients that this is this is um, this is beneficial, uh, means that, for instance, we need to perhaps uh, contact the co construction com companies a lot earlier, as designers have information a lot earlier as well. But I think, in the end, um, it will be beneficial because things will happen, uh, and you know that knowledge can only come from people that have done it before. Okay, well, um, I think that's everything on my side. I'm not sure if you want to summarize something, Russ, Pedro. Uh, we we, we, we are quite a few minutes after, so we still some people's attention, so it's you want to wrap it up. We answer everything. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, we, we went through all the questions while, while we were speaking, so. Um, well, First of all, well, thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. I think it uh, has been a privilege, uh, and uh, I hope you enjoy uh, the, the the vision that we have in the last year, of trying to forecast the future and explain explain our situation, our challenge, our our, our doubts, and these uncertainties. Um, we'll try to continue this series of talk um, with a. We're trying to make you more participative. We're going to work on that. We want to make sure the audience part of these uh, sessions, and, and with uh, speakers so of the caliber we're saying from Pedro and Rasmus uh, and the companies they do represent and, and different visions of the of the, of the spectrum, the construction and technology industry. Um, Thank you for the for the invite. And, uh, um, and that's that. that's pretty much it. Uh, Russ, we could, we could thank you very much. Figure out if what we talked about was actually come coming true and then we can, uh, we we, can we will do it again we will we will
I got I've got like various uh, topics that we we, we I brought down some nice, uh, interesting points that we discuss uh, for, for future talks. I think we're going to always try to be uh, uh, our point here in Modelicus, make sure that they are collaborative. We, we, we are um, updating everyone with everything we discover, we know, we think it's uh, uh, at least a matter to present. Um, so we will do. Um, and, and we hope you to continue with your participation and maybe perhaps go to uh, another attempt uh, we can propose even the audience, if that works, which one will we like the preferred uh, idea. Um, I don't know if John is writing something uh, we want us to 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 answer or we're gonna have to we're gonna have to uh, I, I know you don't like to talk to anyway. if, uh, if he doesn't get the question answered. Yeah. You know him? Okay, I think I've, we, we know all each other here. Well, thank you all for for your attention, and uh, you know, um, hope to see you soon. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, for those who are in London, it's a Much great day. Thank you. And please, thank uh, you. Okay. happy birthday to Pedro. Uh, it's his birthday. He decided to share this time special pride with you. And uh, sure. I hope you, hope you can, you. Uh, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you, we can talk in the future. Thank you very much. Bye.